Hi there everybody. Today I am doing a, a video all about parenting in the perimenopause. Um, I put a message out there to ask if anyone had any specific questions about, about parenting in this phase of life. Um, because it brings with it, I think it's kind of unique challenges. Um, and what I wanted to say, actually, before I get into the get into the questions um, and, and my kind of reflections on them, is that by simply um, logging on now, I can see a few of you are, are joining, um, which is lovely, um, or, you know, watching this later in the future, um, just having that interest, having that curiosity um, about, you know, your parenting role during perimenopause is is basically half the battle, really. Just having that awareness that this is that this is tricky um, and that brings with it lots of struggles, very, very normal struggles. This is this is life. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with struggling. Um, that's in a way the problem is that we think there's something wrong with struggling. I hope that makes sense. Um, human beings often get caught in these traps and, and often it's the, it's the layer of emotion and the layer of worry and anxiety on top of very normal human condition stuff that goes on that's kind of the problem really. Um, so having struggled, I mean, gosh, be, you know, being a parent in whatever form that might be, parent or, or carer, um, is, yeah, it does. It bring, brings lots of different challenges. Um, however, challenges always means, always means growth. There's just no two ways about it. When something's challenging and difficult, there's always growth there. So, um, so yeah, and, and the other thing to mention before I get into these specific questions that have been asked is just to just a comment on the fact that um how of how unique we all are not only in ourselves our bodies our minds our experiences everything everything that's going on for you right now everything that's gone on for you in the past obviously is completely unique and then put into the mix your unique um, children, whoever, you know, that you're caring for and parenting, your relationships. I mean, it's there are just so many layers um, of uniqueness that are weaving through this. And I know that's obvious, but I really want to make that. I really want to highlight that because um, I do think there's some really helpful. There's, there's a lot of helpful stuff out there. However, I mean, my in my um, career of working with children and families for so many years, you know, I can't tell you the amount of times I've said just ditch the books, ditch those parenting books. Um, and actually what we're going to do is we're going to really tune into you and your intuition and your knowing. I feel like... Um, that's kind of lost uh, quite a lot in, in the world these days, in the world of, you know, information overload. <laughs> and here's me kind of me almost doing my bit, really. However, um, I'm going to go through my reflections and literally that's what they are. And yes, they are based on um, a lot of a big body of research and theories and approaches. I'm trained in all all of the stuff. However, that doesn't mean there's a there's a right. I'm not going to be telling you to, you know, that there's a right way to kind of go about these things. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention that, really. So one of the questions that I got asked um, was I'm going to actually, actually going to read it out. So it says um, how to manage the exhaustion and that's the key. I mean, that actually came up in all the different questions. <laughs> How to manage the exhaustion while parenting and trying to find time for me too. I literally, I'm literally in bed at 8pm most nights. I've previously used my cycle to help me know what support I might need at different times. Awesome. Um, but not having periods for the last few months has completely thrown me. And the exhaustion seems to be more permanent. 
So I've got quite a few things in response to this. And of course, as I say, this is, um, you know, this is me sat in my room giving my reflections. And, um, you know, if I was if I was sat one to one, you know, talking this through with somebody, you know, we'd have that interaction and I would, would be responding to each other. So some of this may not reson resonate with some of you and some of it might. So I'm going to kind of just give uh, an overview of different areas. What I quite often do to sort of structure my mind is I go through the biological, the psychological and the spiritual aspects of perimenopause and menopause. Um, so that's how I'm going to structure um, some of these responses. So, so um, firstly, the, the biology uh, which I'm not a, a huge expert at, on, of course, being a psychologist. However, I do have some awareness of it. Um, and I recommend, you know, following the, the medics who are specialists uh, in menopause, like the menopause doctor and Zoe, menopause, Man um, Manchester, menopause, Oh, got it right. Manchester Menopause Hive, I think it is. Sorry, Zoe, if I've not got that right. Um, but biologically, um, I think what I want to say is we are coming, we are entering our 40s and therefore going into perimenopause um, and that going through our 40s and into our 50s. We, so many of us are entering this phase exhausted um for sure and that there's a whole a whole um discussion separate discussion could be had around that and why that is i am definitely one of those women um who you know was go 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 doing it all the things for all the people you know working hard playing hard doing all the different things um and then when our hormones start to fluctuate we rely a lot more on our adrenal system um, and basically if our adrenals if we're coming to this phase with a pretty um, tired and fatigued adrenal system we're, we're going to struggle we're going to be exhausted that's definitely me I was looking burnout right in the eye and so many of us it's really really common um, so the the first thing is to just mention about the biological stuff, the nutrition and the movement and all that kind of stuff. I know it's really obvious and basic. Um, however, what's really positive is it can have such a beneficial effect. Um, there are very specific um, pathways around nutrition, in, uh, for example, that have a direct impact impact on our hormones. And there's certain things that are out there that we're eating and drinking that have just got loads of hormone, other hormones that are just not helping us. So it is worth really looking at that. And actually, Lindsay from Recovery Nutrition, she's a fab expert, and there are other other nutritionists who specialise in menopause and nutrition. I also want to say on on this, and this is possibly not going to be popular. But um, I, 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 we really can't be drinking alcohol and not very much in this phase. Oh, it's such a, I know that's a hard thing to hear for many of us because some of us feel like actually that's what gets us through. Um, but our bodies can't tolerate it very well. So, um, and it has a huge impact on, I'm not going to go into it here, but it does have a huge impact on our brain functioning and our emotions and our sleep and our quality of sleep. Obviously, a lot of women, a lot of us are struggling and we we wake up and there's a lot, insomnia is really common in perimenopause. We wake up and ex experience that anxiety. Alcohol obviously has a massive impact on quality of, of sleep, but regardless, in some, you know, sleep is a, is a big issue. So there's those sort of, I've just touched on a couple of biological factors there that are just worth, you know, looking into. That's obviously not my bag. My bag is the psychological. Um, so this may or may not be relevant to, to you that, you know, that's listening, but I do want to mention that the... This phase of life, this middle phase of life and perimenopause, when our hormones are fluctuating, and if you've not seen any of my videos before or not followed me and you're kind of new to this and you aren't, aren't aware, our anxiety system, our anxiety is dialed up. That is a biological fact of what happens in perimenopause when the, when the hormones are fluctuating. Um, so we, we do feel more anxious. Our nervous system that's related to anxiety goes up. And HRT can help with that. That's the that's the pathway that can help with that. Um, however, 
so that happens and we are um i have talked in other videos about why that is the evolutionary reason for that but we are we are cracked open we really are cracked open and um it's a can be a very frightening a really scary time and um anxiety is just so common um however that's not all a, a bad thing believe it or not i know that's probably quite hard to hear if you're in the middle of feeling extreme anxiety however through and beyond the anxiety if we can receive the right um well the kind of support that can help us with that um is growth i've mentioned that already um a lot of women are finding a lot of women that i'm talking to and a lot of women are finding that that emotional trauma um or pre or unresolved grief and loss um a vast array of emotional issues that that they hadn't even thought about for for years um or possibly it kind of comes closer to the surface and a lot of us are working subconsciously very very hard at keeping that that stuff um pushed pushed down and pushed away understandably that makes sense that we we do that and actually i think we've needed a need a lot of women have had to do that you know we've been out there doing our things we've you know we're talking about parenting here we're having children all that we kind of you know doing that so it makes sense actually that all that kind of emotional stuff is pushed to one side um however it comes to the surface and if we're trying to kind of push it away then that process of pushing those emotions away is that is exhausting it really really is so it might be the time to turn towards some of that stuff and process it so that it can be kind of shelved and put away. Um, it's never going to go away. I'm never going to have not experienced stuff. Um, however, there are ways or psychological approaches that can help us to process in it for it to not be so, uh, for us not to be having to push it away, but actually for it to just have been and for us to get on and enjoy our life. This is the time of life to do this. You know, if we can do that and really work through any kind of stuff like that, then um, we're going to fly postmenopausal. But we do need to do the do that kind of work now. And also, um, sort of slightly less less deep, but what's also really common is that we've we've got into habits of overthinking. Lots of us have got into habits of overthinking as parents. Because when we have our children, what happens is that our hormone, the changes that happen to um during pregnancy and um postnatally, our hormone changes. Um, actually prime us to do that, prime us to kind of overthink, to be hypervigilant, watchful for threats, because obviously we've got these precious new uh, new babies and then, you know, obviously older babies and toddlers to really watch out for and care for. Um, so if you're a parent, if so, obviously some women are having children at um, the, in this phase, in our in our 40s. So you really need to be aware of that because it is a double whammy of kind of um, anxiety, hormonal changes. Um, so, yeah, there's, some, there's something to be aware of there. If we've not just had our children, but they're a little bit older, any different, you know, any age, really, um, it's we we may still be in that mode of kind of overthinking we may still have those habits many of us do we kind of overthink worrying you know thinking about things worrying about the future or thinking brooding on the past things like that um so that kind of learning um, not learning thinking process and those thinking and um, strategies they're exhausting. They're exhausting. They really are. It's almost like we're online and we've got all the tabs open of our of our brains. They're all open at once. Um, and actually, we need to close them off. But we need to learn the skills to do that. Um, and a super set of skills to learn is what the, what's referred to as psychological flexibility. So it's being able to live our lives without getting caught and stuck in those overthinking um, patterns. Now, I, that those are the skills that I teach women. And I'm I'm doing for the rest of the year i'm doing some very small groups of one-to-one -one, um, work at a really reduced cost next year i'll be doing a course that you can take and it will be um, a, a much lower cost and it will be like a self-study course with some um with some support with from me through that but at the moment i'm just doing it one-to-one -one. um the this current um group is full but there's a couple of spaces in november so if you do think actually i could do learning some psychological these <laughs> these skills 
skills that Becky's on about psychological flexibility, you know, learning how to um, how to cope when those those thoughts are kind of going round and round and round and we're just feeling overwhelmed in anxiety, then then get in touch with me. Um, another thing that's really common in in parenting that I think also relates to exhaustion. I'm still on this this question. It kind of covers it does cover the other the other bits from the questions as well. Um, and I will come on to the fact that not having periods anymore. So bear with me. But another thing that is exhaustion is that whole mother's guilt thing. Um, oh, my word. Mother's guilt. Oh, just the fact that that's a thing. That's a, ter- you know, a kind of, you know what I mean by that is just so annoying. <laughs> that, yeah. But anyway, um, I used to think that that was just part of parenting. And I'm a blimmin' psychologist working in children and families for many years. But when I had my children, you know, would feel guilty about leaving them, blah, blah, blah. I just thought, oh, yeah, that's mother's guilt. That's, that's, I mean, I did use my flexibility skills and just sort of let that go. But I just thought it was a thing and it was a, it was a normal thing to have. Um, but I really don't think it is. I think it really keeps us trapped and stuck. Uh, this beating ourselves up, um, you know, really criticising ourselves as well as the guilt. It's like really beating ourselves up. And of course, if we're having an internal battle with ourselves in our minds, um, so many of us beat ourselves up, don't we? Whenever I mention that to anyone, it's like, yep, 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 yep. You know, really kind of say some really mean things to ourselves about how crap we are, etc., etc. That's exhausting. That's another factor uh, that really adds, I think, to the to the the, the exhaustion. Um, and again, it's about those those flexibility skills to to re- how to respond to those um, critical thoughts that we have, but also learning. And I really honestly believe this is that we need to learn this. I've had to learn this. It's for lots of reasons. I don't need to go in here into now. For lots of reasons, I just didn't come naturally to talk, you know, really kindly and compassionately and beautifully to myself um, and perceive myself um, in as in the kind of power and worth that I have. It just doesn't come naturally. So it is, it's actually about learning how to do that. And we can learn how to do that. Um, it really, you know... Um, What's just come to my mind there, I will share it, is Kate Codrington talks about how menopause is an inside job. And it is, you know, it's, it's this inside job um, of really working on ourselves. Um, and then the growth and the potential that we have if and when we do that is phenomenal. And that's why I'm really passionate about supporting everybody, because I know the potential. If we can kind of work through this stuff right now, then boom, post-menopause, we're going to, we're going to like rock this world. Um, Then also that's kind of the psychological, I've talked on some of the aspects of the psychological aspects. Um, But then there's the, the sort of spiritual aspect, the fact that this is the time that we are shedding layers of ourselves that no longer serve us. And we really are returning to reclaiming ourselves. And and what I've already mentioned kind of feeds into this. However, I think it's a really good time to pause and really reflect on what... Because this um, this doesn't necessarily mean the big, deep stuff. I'm talking about what what serves you, what energises you, what brings you joy and, and kind of bolsters your your um your energy because we're talking about exhaustion here what what bolsters your energy as a parent going through perimenopause so many of us have lost sight of what we actually really enjoy doing you know what kind of um lights us up and brings us joy some of us know that and that's fine but i found um a couple of years ago i really wasn't aware i wasn't sure of that because of course you know been so um in the depths of parenting, I kind of lost myself, really. It's a real cliche, but hey, it's it's cliche for a reason. And yeah, kind of working out, oh, actually, that's the music I really enjoy. I really love. And that's the thing. That's the food. The, I really love these foods um, and whatever it might be. Working out, it's almost like a, an energy bank, you know, working out what feet, what, what, in, um, what comes in, what really brings you joy and energy and, and friendships and relationships come into this as well. What, who, who nurtures you and feeds you and uh, well, literally and uh, also emotionally, you know, what kind of bolsters you and what, what and who drains you? It's time to let go of those things that drain you. 
because um, we haven't got we haven't got time for that. We can't, you know. I've, already, I've just mentioned a few things that that drain our energy, um, but there are there are lots of things. But yeah, we those things that drain us. We we it's time to be kind of shedding and letting go of some of those if you know if we can. So um, yeah, the the what I want to say is that it really does begin with. This is another cliche, but it, it does. It begins with us. When I'm thinking about parenting perimenopause. It's um, and what's so exhausting and what I haven't mentioned is is the kind of sensory aspect that in perimenopause and menopause, our sensory systems for some of us become very, very um, sensitive. That's me. Mine does. Um, And so, you know, children, just everything about being a parent and and the noise and just the stuff you have to do it, it is. It's exhausting on our senses on our on our um, sen- sensory systems as well. Um, so we really need to prioritise ourselves before our kids. Mm. I know that's, um, you know, that's kind of tough. Um, and it's very radical to, thing to say, actually. But I have, I kind of think that if I don't put my energy first, then, then I'm literally no use to anybody. It doesn't mean that I don't parent and I don't look after my children, etc., etc. But, um... Yeah, if I have no energy at all, then then I'm no use to anybody. And it's also really helpful for children to know what's going on with you. You know, to share that if you are having a menstrual cycle, you know, when you're when you're coming on towards your period, and then you're menstruating, and you need to have deep rest. Telling them that I do that with my girls. They know that that's that's the time, the quiet time for a couple of days. There's not much going on with me really. Um, God, I could go on to a whole new thing about that. But yeah, rest, 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 and at men menopause in particular so in perimenopause our hormones are fluctuating but at menopause when we're getting close to menopause and where our periods have stopped stopping and stopped or stopped for 12 months that kind of true kind of menopause phase that is the stage where rest is the key task um the the in a way the kind of letting go and the psychological stuff very much and the anxiety very much related to perimenopause and menopause it's about really resting really really having true deep rest um it is the number one task for menopause i've written down there um so if we don't have any sight if we're not um cycling anymore not having a menstrual cycle i mean i am no expert in this because i haven't gone through it yet myself i mean i'm you know i read up on this and i'm and i um talk to a lot of women who are in menopause or postmenopausal um however i'm i'm intrigued to see how that will be once i've kind of gone through that myself but what i hear is um that the the moon is a really helpful way to structure our energies and so with the new moon be the new moon being like our menstruation phase and the full moon being um like the ovulation phase that works i mean i i'm very sensitive to the moon i can feel the differences myself so tracking the moon can be a way because it's about structuring i mean really what it is is it's deep attunement isn't it when we're when we haven't got the cycle it's almost like um at red school who that my um men's um menstruality kind of mentors they talk about our menstrual cycles are almost they are our training wheels um and then then at menopause that we kind of let go of those training wheels and we kind of go it alone really and so it it's a it's a tricky phase without that structure we maybe don't realize how much our menstrual cycle organized ourselves so it's a time when our cycles are dropping off to deeply attuned to ourselves and to our bodies um, and work out when and it might not be it might not be a cyclical thing I, I do hear that cycles do still take place but it's about just getting to really know your body um inside out so another question was what well, oh, i've been on for 24 minutes i'll try not to be too much longer another question was or a comment was today i've been really uh, i've really been questioning my ability to parent and then wondering if I, if I was 10 years younger would I cope better um I mean that is it's that so there's a lot in that itself there's that there's more to it but um yeah that we the questioning of ourselves as parents I've already touched on that I think already but um it's it is massive and it goes to that kind of self-critical thing doesn't it 
and and expectations of ourselves and society's expectations um but it's because this is such a time of reflection it depends on how old our children are but i well i think that the questioning thing doesn't ever go away from the day they're born and probably forever um but it's um yeah i think we've become a lot more reflective in this phase and yeah i also i mean i I could talk a lot about that actually um about about the changes in modern life and how lots of us are having children later um and i do think it's a problem actually i really do i mean you know i've had children later and it's i just don't think as humans we've quite worked out how to kind of be humans in this in this modern world modern technology and developments and advancements have just gone boom it's crazy um i was actually watching a film about um oh god what's what's his name the the um the mac the guy the, oh my word that's that's perimenopausal brain for you isn't it anyway about computers and the development of um of computers and it's not, it's really not been that long since it and obviously when i was young the computers it was like we had a spectrum and it was really old and rubbish and look at everything now and that's a really short space of time um however um i'm just reading a comment there um however as human beings we haven't developed like we don't develop like that evolution takes thousands of years so we i just don't think we've worked out you know how to adapt to this changing world you know a lot of us are obviously working now and we want to work and that's so fulfilling and great for us however we're also hormonal beings um and here we're talking about parenting so you know we've we've had children and how do we kind of marry all this up and the fact that we are having children later, closer to the point where um, our hormones start fluctuating. I think it's tricky no matter what phase it is. If you're having children in your 40s, I've already mentioned about that. If you've got kind of youngish primary school children, you're still very much, you know, caring for them and doing so much for them. And, and they shout and scream. And although they obviously shout and scream when they're teenagers as well. So then it's like the teenage combination of their hormones and then we've got empty nesters. Um, so women who whose children are a bit older. Um, whereas I guess in the past, you know, when people had children and they're in their early 20s, then by the time you're getting into your 40s, mid 40s, 50, you know, you're well past that. Anyway, we can't we can't change things. It's just really interesting reflect, to reflect on it and to realise, to be honest with ourselves, this is really, you know, this is a tough phase of life. And so we, we, but it also means that we are therefore learning some flipping brilliant life skills, resiliency skills, definitely for emotional growth going forward. Um, so it's, it's tricky, but it's, but it's holds a lot of potential. It's very exciting. Um, I know that a lot of you won't be thinking it is, but you know, bear with me. Um, I struggle too. I struggle too. Um, but I also see the potential. Um, so this lady then went on to, I'm 50, perimenopause and feel like I just don't have the energy to deal with my 10 year old who's quite slow at doing everything and needs a lot of asking to get stuff done. Just getting everything together for the first day back at school tomorrow is exhausting. Plus, I think the anxiety I have from perimenopausal state is not helping either. Absolutely. I and mean, we've I've already talked about the kind of exhausting, you know, the, the how everything's so exhausting. So I've talked about that. So but I wanted to touch on the anxiety because we are I, I yeah, I noticed that a lot, a lot in my body. You know, our, our bodies are in that heightened anxiety state. And so things can just overwhelm us really easily. And we feel like we just can't cope. Well, that's how I feel sometimes. Um, because when we're in a slightly more anxious state and there's like a loud noise, you know, like suddenly the fight breaks out between them or whatever it is. Like my I, my body, particularly um, in the second half of my cycle, so when premenstrual, it really, oh gosh, it's, it's hard, it's jangly. It makes my body very jangly. Um, it's very, very tricky. So we need that awareness. You know, we need to have that self-awareness to be able to pause and reflect on what's going on in our bodies. Learn how to regulate, to dip down, regulate our anxiety. Um, as I say, if it's really, if it's a real problem, then there are, as well as lifestyle, lifestyle changes, um, you know, there are hormone um 
HRT can really help. But also the psychological skills just help us through those moments are so, so important. Um, And then a final thing that was mentioned was around the eye rolls, the shrugs and the stomping, you know, that we get from from our children. Um, And I mean, I could talk a lot about that, but I guess what I'm what I what it made me think about was about practicing that key 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 life skill especially as a parent um that doesn't always that doesn't come first and foremost but the the skill is curiosity because i bet you'll find that if your child does well obviously you'll if you're a parent your child's going to do stuff that's flipping annoying and really really irritating um and that's probably an understatement however sometimes it'll really wind you up and sometimes it won't really you know? And so it's when it does, it's about stepping back and being curious. What's going on with me here? Start with yourself rather than what the hell are they doing? Why are they doing that? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I know it's easier said than done. (laughs) It is a practice that needs, uh, it's a skill that needs practicing. But the more we can do that, pause, you know, have that self-awareness to pause, reflect inwards, curiously, okay, what's going on here? Because it might be that that is triggering, you know, say they are, say it is an eye roll or a shrug, that might be triggering something within ourselves of not feeling respected, wanted, loved, all that kind of stuff that can, it can, it doesn't mean that the eye roll and the shrug is, is necessarily okay. But I guess um, our reaction to it, we need to be aware of our reaction to it. Um, because that's really, I mean, having worked with children and families for so many years, I mean, the, the you know, it would be a mine, there was a minority where I worked purely just with the child. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I was always very clear with families. There's no point in me working with a child that's struggling without working with parents, you know, and I'm a parent myself. And it's not because I'm, there's no blame on parents. It's just that how we are can have a huge impact on our children. So it's just, it's a positive thing that actually if we shift and change something, um, then then that will just have a knock on effect. And, and that's within our control. We can do something around that. Um, so yeah, that kind of learning to surf the urge of, of irritation, annoyance and what have you just for a moment and just be reflective and then, and then decide what to, how to go about it. Now, before I finish, gosh, I've gone on for half an hour. Um, I wanted to mention a, uh, a, an approach. I'm literally going to do this for two minutes. So if you're with me, stick with me for a couple of more minutes. Um, this comes from, um, a well it's approach called dyadic developmental psychotherapy uh, ddp um i want to say that because it's it's a really big body of work and so i do want to um nod towards them but you don't need to kind of know the ins and outs of it but the the acronym that they use and that's that um basically summarizes the skills that are really really needed within pa- the key parenting skills is pace they call it pace And that stands for playfulness, acceptance, curiosity and empathy. And some people actually call it place and put love in there. But I'm just going to stick with the pace for now. And it doesn't matter what age your child is. And it doesn't actually matter if your child is grown up. It really, in terms of the playfulness, you know, playfulness is absolutely key. It's that fun thing. And we're talking about exhaustion and what kind of lights us up and what bolsters us you know playfulness is really really important and many of us struggle with it um i mean i I remember when they we you know obviously like 20 well 18 19 years ago when i started my training course to be a doctor and clinical psychologist um you know and doing and kind of learning about playfulness with with children and blah 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 play and and he felt really clunky I mean I played as a kid but as an adult we sometimes lose that skill and but playfulness is so important and it doesn't mean getting down and playing with the barbies or the bricks or the whatever it is it's just that approach a fun playfulness approach just lightens the air it's really important acceptance and that is and that's about unconditional acceptance within the parenting relationship but obviously it starts with ourselves so what i've talked about already there's a huge you know there's some potential huge huge um changes that we can make within ourselves around um around i mean that is reclaiming reclaiming ourselves and accepting the part accepting all parts of ourselves 
all parts are welcome. We're not getting rid of parts of ourselves, whatever we've experienced, accepting it all unconditionally, all, you know, yeah. Um, and caring for all parts, especially actually the, the, the upset, the, um, the kind of the anxious parts, caring for them. So accepting and then doing the same with our children. Acceptance, curiosity, just talked about that. I'd say that's the number, I'd say that's like the first thing actually, curiosity, it just, it just means that everything else falls into place. If we can just become more curious, pause and be curious, every situation ourselves, we're, we're on a, we, we then it's almost like we're at a choice point. So that's what we use sometimes um, in our work, we talk about choice points. So if we pause and are curious, then we can choose which way to go and how to act, how to react, how to behave, what have you. Um, but if we don't pause and be curious, we're just, um, we're acting and reacting unconsciously quite often. And then the last one is empathy. Um, so really feeling, again, it starts with ourselves, feeling, attuning to our own feelings and emotions. And that's a key with anxiety. A lot of us are trying to sort of push it away and not, and not because it is, it is uh, so uncomfortable, but that then becomes a trap. Whereas actually, if we can empathise and feel our feelings, trust me, that dissipate, the anxiety then is, that's how to regulate and dissipate the anxiety. And then the same with our children. So empathising with their feelings, whatever they might be, when you can. I mean, I could, I could talk a lot about that. It doesn't mean you're constantly empathising, but just having that level of empathy um, in your relationship. Wow, I've talked a lot there. I hope I haven't overwhelmed you. There's a possibility that I have. Um, but uh, one thing before I go, I actually listened to a podcast. It's so funny how this happens. I'll think about talking. I'll be either having a session with some of the client or talking to someone or a podcast interview or a video like this. And then I'll listen or read something. And it's exactly what I need. Very, um, very resonant. So this morning, I went for a run and I listened to a podcast. I've just discovered um, lots of you. I know she's very popular, so um, I'm a bit late to the party. But Pippa Gordon um, does a podcast called Inside My Wardrobe, I think it's called. It's it's brilliant. She's brilliant. Um, she's I've just kind of connected with her recently. So she her it's not her most recent one that I listened to, but her, the one called Healthy Selfish with Mandy... I can't read my own writing, but I think it's Saligari. Yeah, Mandy Saligari. Oh, my word. Brilliant. And it's all about lots of things we've talked about today. Mandy is absolutely fantastic. Psychotherapist. Uh, I think that's her title, which is a therapist down in down in London. And um, yeah, healthy, selfish. Yeah, we need a, we need some more of that. But they talk about a lot of things to, in around relationships. Um, and yeah, I resonated a lot with what what Mandy was saying. So that's a helpful podcast to go and and listen to if you want to think about this a bit more for, a bit further. But and also on that point, when I finished listening to that podcast, I'm aware that we kind of we're almost we consume information without actually thinking about what they what we're going to take from it so I actually paused and after that podcast I thought right what have I taken from that and what am I going to kind of weave into myself and my life or my work and so I'd suggest you do this here I have obviously given I've taught a lot and there's a lot of information there um but what resonated with you just once I'm about to sign off now but just have a pause and for a moment just think what was it one thing just one thing that resonated with you from what I'm talking about and just for you to kind of be reflective on and think about um, in your parenting relationships so that's everything for today um I know that I've I mean even though I've talked a lot it's almost like scratching the surface there's so much more for us to talk about I've not even mentioned the fact that you know culturally there are so many layers and so many differences and and all sorts of different layers that we can put on top of this but I hope it there was so, um, some use and I will see you next time okay bye <laughs>